This series of videos gives you quick exercises that you can use to get good at Blender. They're designed as challenges, so you see a model and you have to try and recreate it. They either get increasingly difficult or they introduce a new skill each time. This way you're not only learning, but you're practicing the skills. Okay, so the first model I want you to have a go at is this kind of fruit bowl here. Nice big flat bowl. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten okay with this. My 3D cursor is already in the middle here. Shift right click to move that. Shift A to add mesh and then cylinder. I'll scale it down so we can see it more easily to somewhere around here and move it across in the X axis. So I'm starting with a cylinder. I'll scale this in the Z axis so it's nice and small. And this can be the base of the bowl here. I'll go to front view with one on my numpad and just move that into a more precise position so it's in line. And then let's go into edit mode and think about how to create it. Now the very simplest way is to select the top face, extrude it upwards, so E to extrude and then scale it out. I'll just go to front view and see what the height looks like, probably down a little bit there. And then I can delete the top face, so delete faces. I need to create this kind of curve here, so I'm going to need some more topology. So once again, to front view, control R to do a loop cut and probably around about here. And then I can scale this up to create a bit of a curve. And at this point, I can press control B to bevel, use the wheel of your mouse to create more cuts and probably around about here, I can probably scale this up a little bit more maybe. So we've got this bowl shape. So how do we create the thickness of the bowl? Well, there's a couple of ways to do this. You might think if I go to face mode and alt left click to select the face loop at the top and shift alt left click all the way down to here and then E to extrude outwards that I've created the thickness. But unfortunately we've got this big gap at the bottom here. So it doesn't quite work out that way. So I'll undo that. The slightly easier way is to actually just duplicate these. So Shift D to duplicate, and then tap Z for the Z axis, and I can move them up slightly. I'll probably scale them in very slightly so there's a bit of a slope inwards, as you can see on the other one just there. And so now I've got this extra topology here. I can go to edge mode, so that's edge mode up here. Select this edge around here and this edge around here. And hopefully you remember under the edge menu, so Control E to get to the edge menu, you've got bridge edge loops, and I've created this sort of bowl structure. I have got a big hole in the middle here though, and I can alt left click to select that loop cut around there. And the easiest way to fill this in is to press F to fill. And we've got this basic bowl structure here. So that's one way of doing it. There is another way. I'll duplicate this and bring it across in the X axis, go into edit mode, and I can press control plus to grow my selection, select all the faces on the inside there and delete those faces. I'll show you one alternative way. That's to use a modifier. Let's bring out my properties panel here, go into the modifiers down here, add modifier and start typing in solid. There's the solidify modifier. Now there's a couple of things to be aware of here. First of all, here's the thickness. So I can thicken this up and it's kind of working, but we've got this problem in the middle here, which I'll talk about in a moment. But the other thing to be aware of is the thickness. So this thickness across here is supposed to be 22 centimeters. So 0.22 meters, of course but it looks more like less than one centimeter. Well, that's all to do with if I press N on my keyboard and go to item, oh, and jump back into object mode. It's all to do with this scale here. So the dimensions here, the bowl is about 30 centimeters, which is possibly about right for a fruit bowl, but our thickness is suggesting it's 22 centimeters, which is almost the size of the bowl. But because we've scaled it, this is relative to this scale here. So what we need to do is kind of reset this scale so it's at one, for the size it is now. I'll just bring the bowl into the middle and we reset the scale by pressing Control A and we can then apply the scale that it is now and therefore this changes to one. And look how the shape changes. That's because this thickness is now 22 centimeters. So I can bring this right down closer to one centimeter and that actually looks correct now given that this is 30 centimeters wide. Still a bit big so I'll have to go into here and put 0.005 somewhere around there. And there we've got that thickness. The solidify modifier is a very useful modifier because you can just model the shape of something and then fill it in quite easily. So for panels on a car or something like that, the solidify modifier is a really good one. But in this case, it's got this problem in the middle here. Let's go to wireframe mode so you can kind of see what's going on there. It's trying to solidify this shape and it just looks a little bit strange. Let's go out of wireframe. The best way to deal with this is once you're happy with the shape is to apply the modifier. So on the drop down here, I can apply. You can only do this in object mode, so make sure you're in object mode. Click apply, and then I can go back to edit mode and go into the faces and delete these inside faces here, and this one here, 
delete faces. And then again, go to edge mode with two, select this edge loop here and F to fill. And now I have this bowl shape just like the other one here. And in fact, over here. So we've got three fruit bowls, aren't we lucky? Okay, so that's one way of making that fruit bowl. And there are lots of other ways and some more effective than others. And we'll talk through one of them in just a moment. First of all, I want you to make this basic bottle just here. I'll zoom in on that. I'll press N on my keyboard to get rid of the side panel. And I want you to create that in the same way we did with the fruit bowl just out of a cylinder. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you've got an okay with this. Again, I'll press Shift A to add, mesh and then cylinder. I'll scale it down. And before I do anything, I'll just zoom out. I'll go into edit mode and with everything selected, I'll scale it down. And then I'll go back into object mode and press N on my keyboard. I just wanted to show you that if you scale down in edit mode, it still keeps the original scale of one here. So that's a quicker way of scaling it down without having to press Control A to apply the scale. Don't worry if that didn't make too much sense. It'll make more sense as you go along and use Blender more. I'll go to front view to position it and let's get rid of the side panel now with N and G to grab and move this into position. So somewhere around here. I can scale it down a little bit more now. Notice, of course, if I press N, I've got this scale here. And if I wanted to add a solidify modifier, I would need to press Control A to apply the scale and set that back to one. So just a quick reminder there. Into edit mode, select the top face. So face mode with three, select the top face, back to front view, E to extrude, scale it down, E to extrude. And then at the top here, we've got a slight issue. There's a couple of ways of doing this. We can extrude out and then Alt left click to select a loop of faces and E to extrude, S to scale and Shift Z so it's not in the Z axis. So E to extrude, then I'm scaling up E, then S, and then Shift Z to exclude the Z axis. That's one way of doing it. I'll just show you another way. I'll undo that and go back to this point here. What I can do here is E to extrude, then S to scale straight away. So I'm creating this extra set of faces here. It's a little bit weird that because they're completely flat, so they flicker a little because there's a big face on top right on top of these smaller faces. So it can be a bit confusing to understand this one, but I can now press E to extrude and bring this upwards. That's a very slightly more efficient way because we don't have a set of faces at the top here, but there's not a lot in it. You can do it either way. So hopefully you got an okay with that and you did it one of those two ways. Okay, so back into object mode and I'll bring up my next bottle. Tricky to see there, I'll just move my other one out of the way. I want you to edit it so it looks a bit like this. I've got some slight shading anomalies there, but that's to do with the way this is shaded. If I turn off the cavity, it looks normal. So edit the bottle so it looks more like this. Pause the video and have a go at that. If you like the style of learning, you might be interested in one of my courses, or if you're dreaming of a career in 3D art, my eight week intensive program takes you from absolute beginner to indie studio ready in just two months. You'll learn essential skills, build up a strong portfolio, and be ready to launch your 3D art career. There's limited spots available, and you can find out more in the link in the description. Okay, so I'll take my original. I'll just duplicate this. So I've got one there and one here. So I'll put them next to each other. And let's go into edit mode. And the way I can smooth these curves out, as hopefully you remember, is to go to edge mode. So that's two on my keyboard or edge mode up here. Alt left click to select the edge loop and control B to bevel. And we can create a nice smooth outline here. We can add a loop cut if we want with the wheel of our mouse and probably something around there. This one too, I believe, looks like it needs to bevel. So control B to bevel. I'll reduce the cuts on this one with the wheel of my mouse. And we've got something like this. And in case you don't know, if I go into object mode, right click, there's shade auto smooth and you can see it shades it in a similar way. The Auto Smooth actually adds a modifier and it will make anything that's got an angle above 30 degrees sharp. So you can see the corners here are sharp and the corners around the bottle top there are sharp. Okay, so that's the way of taking a cylinder and then modifying it to different shapes like a fruit bowl or this bottle. What I want to show you now is a more advanced technique, which is possibly a little bit more optimum. I'll shift right click over here, shift A to add, mesh and with this technique you can start with any mesh. I'll just start with a cube which we can see there. I'll go into edit mode and then into vertex mode and lastly press M to merge at center. So what we have in the middle here if I press period key on my numpad is one single vertex. I'll go to front view now. Let me just zoom out just a touch. My bottle's in a funny location here but I can press E to extrude to bring out that single vertex and press X to constrain it to the x-axis. So it comes out somewhere like here E to extrude, bring that up, E to extrude, bring that in, and I'm doing the outline of one side of the bottle. E to extrude, I'll tap Z this time, 
and very roughly create the outline of a bottle like so and roughly line these two edges up here. Then I can use a modifier called the screw modifier. So across to our properties, under the modifiers, add modifier and then screw. And you can see that there. Now instantly it creates this bottle. You can see there's the angle and you can, you can screw around a little bit less if you want to, but I'll undo that. There's steps with how smooth this is. So that's 16 and it's going around 16 times. You can merge the vertices at the bottom and the top. So if this was out very slightly here, if I untick the merge, you can see there's a hole there and the merge has a distance of one centimeter, which you can see there. There's also a couple of useful things with the normals as well. Occasionally the normals get flipped. So you might want to make sure calculate order is ticked there. That tends to sort everything out. So you might as well tick it straight away. Now, the great thing about this is we can edit our shape really easily. So if I go to front view, I can, let's say, take this vertex here and to bevel a vertex, you can press control B. And then if you look down the bottom, you can see in the middle, down the bottom, just there, you can tap V to affect vertices. And I can create a bevel at the bottom here. And now there is a quicker shortcut. You can press control shift B to bevel a vertex. And if I press V, it turns it off and on again. And I can create my bottle this way by doing some bevels. And I can easily change the shape if I wanted to and have a really unusual looking bottle like this. So there's a few steps there. We first take our shape, merge the vertices to this point, create the outline, add the screw modifier, make sure the merge is on and the calculate normals is on there. And then we can adjust the shape by using a bevel or just moving the vertices around. So with that in mind, I want you to create this potion bottle here. And as an extra challenge, create the lid. I'll just move this one out of the way so you can see that more easily. So pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten okay with that and you remember the steps. I'll just go to front view and bring this one next to the other one and just talk through a couple of things about this. So first of all, we need to create the shape. So I'll get the rough shape here. Something like this anyway. I probably don't need this point here maybe. So I can press control X to dissolve a point. That's different to delete. So let's take this one for example. If I press X to get to the delete menu, if I just delete the vertex, it deletes the face around it as well. So I'll undo that. You'll notice under the delete menu, there's dissolve vertices just there and we can dissolve it. I can then press control shift B to bevel these and create the more circular shape. And I'll select all these three and control shift B to create a smoother outline like so. I'll bring this one in a little bit, so G the next. And just adjust the shape slightly. I will actually delete the top vertices, so delete vertices. And then with this one, get to a point here where we've got a lip just there. And I can extrude this in, so E then X. Obviously at a certain point it will merge, so probably around about here. And we've kind of got an inside to our bottle. We could instead use a solidify modifier just here to create the thickness of the bottle if we wanted to. But for now, I'll leave it as is. So with the bottle top, I could go through the same procedure, add a mesh, merge the vertices, and then start extruding them out. Or I could just take these ones into front view, shift D to duplicate those vertices, bring them up here and create some sort of cork at the top here. Could be a cork like this, or it could be a bottle top like that either way. And this one can actually go into the bottle like so. I'll go to wireframe or x-ray view in fact with Alt Z so we can sort of put that into the bottle like so. And maybe my bottle shape can adjust according to the cork very slightly. So something like this. And you can adjust this to create a bottle shape if you want to. Now the way to separate the cork so it's a different object is to select all and then press P to separate. You can also find this in the mesh menu, separate just there. And there's by loose parts. And now the top, if I go back to object mode, is a separate object, but it has the screw modifier with it. So that's really useful. Now, the other thing that I've done with this one, you'll notice there's a couple more modifiers. I'll just minimize them so you can see. So there's a screw modifier, a subdivision surface modifier, which I've not talked about yet, and the solidify modifier. The subdivision surface modifier will just smooth it out. So I'll just minimize the screw, add modifier, type in sub, and there's subdivision surface modifier. And you can see that being nicely smoothed out like this one here. And as I was suggesting before, I can delete this vertex here. So X to delete vertex. And then I can add modifier solid. And there's the solidify modifier just there. So we've got some thickness. We'll probably have to bring these out for the thickness of the cork, somewhere around there anyway. And then we can add the modifiers to this one as well if we wanted to. We don't need the solidify modifier for this one. I left it on this one by accident. All we need is the subdivision surface modifier. So add modifier sub 
and we've got a subdivision surface modifier. Now as a quick introduction to the subdivision surface modifier, I'll just press Alt Z and it does look like I'll need to bring this into the middle here. Notice how it pinches at the top here. I'll go into X-ray view and front view because I haven't actually extruded this out, but it's got the same issue at the bottom there. And that's because it's lacking structure or supporting loops. If I select these two and press Control Shift B to bevel vertices and maybe add an extra cut in there, you can see that it adds a bit more structure. I'll talk more about that in the next section. But for now, let's go back to solid mode and see what we're looking like with our bottles. And I think that's great. So there we have it a potion bottle that you can easily adjust the shape to. We've got some bowls there and some other bottles as well. And hopefully you've learned something in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.